Now, early access will initially have six classes available. Let's have a look at them. The Monk is a fast and furious melee fighter. He dashes in and out of combat and has mechanics that involve building up and keeping momentum. Like all classes in PoE2, you'll want to use a wide variety of skills to mix and match different combos. To get new skills, you will first need to find skill gems. Using a skill gem will open the gem cutting menu, which shows all the active skills available in PoE2. You can choose an existing skill to level up, or choose to engrave a new one. Since this is a level 7 skill gem, even if you pick a new skill, it will immediately be level 7, so there's no harm in trying out something new. The Monk primarily uses the Quarterstaff. There are three schools of martial arts, Lightning, Ice, and Wind. But don't think you have to stick to just one. The best combos are going to involve mixing elements of all three. Let's try Killing Palm. Like many Monk skills, this can be used to quickly take advantage of a specific situation. If there's an enemy on low life, you can use Killing Palm to dash to them and kill them instantly. This will provide a power charge. Then we can use a different skill to consume that power charge for a much more devastating attack. The Monk also has powerful combo skills. Tempest Bell, for example, is a skill that places a giant resonating bell. Hitting the bell causes it to ring, dealing damage to all enemies around it. You can also do things like freeze or shock the bell, which will add elemental damage to the strikes. The Monk also has a variety of abilities to empower his staff. If an enemy is close to being stunned, you can use Staggering Palm to punch them down. After that, any attack you do will shoot out wind projectiles. There are 21 active skills for quarter staves, so this just scratches the surface of the options that you have. By endgame you'll be dashing from pack to pack, spewing projectiles and obliterating screens of enemies with huge combo attacks. Now if you like a style of melee that's a little slower but hits much harder, then the warrior is for you. He pounds the ground with big chunky attacks and can shrug off the hits of small enemies with large amounts of armor. Even though the mace slams are slow, you never lose control. Longer attacks can be retargeted as you go, and if you find yourself committed to a long attack, you can dodge roll out of it at any time. Among the skill option for maces, you will find a variety of slams, fire attacks, war cries, and shield skills. Here, I'm going to slam the ground, rending it apart with lines of fire. Any slam skill will then cause these fissures to erupt with lava. I can even run through them with a skill like Stampede to do huge amounts of damage. The warrior can also use war cries, which can empower your next skill. Seismic Cry, for example, will double any slams from your next attack. The Stampede counts as a slam, so I can double that for even more craziness. If you want to go a little faster and be a little more defensive, equip a shield. In PoE 2, you can raise your shield at any time to block all damage from the front, even spells. While holding up your shield, your stun meter will build as you take damage, so be careful. If it reaches 100%, your stance will break and you will be vulnerable. Some enemies also have unblockable attacks, which are indicated by this red flash. If you see one of these coming, make sure to dodge out of the way. Using a shield also gives you access to shield skills, like Shield Charge which allows you to charge towards enemies and stun them. While charging, you're also blocking the whole time, so you have full damage immunity from the front. The warrior also has access to totems. Some totems have built-in abilities, like Shockwave Totem, which can be placed to stun nearby enemies and trigger aftershocks like those from the Earthquake. But you can also get Ancestral Warrior Totems, which allow you to use any slam skill in your repertoire. This is a meta skill, which means that it's a skill you can put other skills into. I can take a slam like Sunder and socket it into my Ancestral Warrior Totem. Now when I summon him, he'll sit there and slam the monsters from a distance. There are 20 active skills for maces, so there's a lot more to try out. But by endgame, you're going to be dropping hammers from the sky, leaping fearlessly into combat and separating the very earth you stand on. Time for some ranged attacks. The Ranger is primarily about the bow, but we wanted to make sure that she feels agile as well. In PoE 2, you can shoot while moving. Combined with all the skills the Ranger has that allow you to jump around, you will have a lot of mobility in combat. Bow skills have a variety of lightning, poison, ice, and physical attacks. Lightning attacks bounce around between targets. You can also stick lightning arrows in the ground which explode when hit by the bounces, or electrocute enemies to take them out of combat. Ice attacks allow you to slow and freeze enemies to keep them away from you. 
Using poison, not only can you slowly damage your enemies from afar, but also grow some interesting plants. With 21 bow skills and all the mobility and combo tools the ranger has, you can take advantage of every situation. By endgame, you'll be creating hundreds of arrows, be they falling from the sky, bouncing around between enemies, or spraying out of tornadoes. You might have noticed in the bottom left of the screen that the flask slots look a little different. In PoE 2, you have one dedicated life flask slot and one mana flask slot. Flasks gain charges as you kill enemies, and typically allow you to heal six or seven times if they're full. But that's not the only thing you can use charges for. Charms are a new item type that will automatically defend you from various debuffs or damage types. Having trouble with getting frozen? Equip a thawing charm. When it's fully charged, it will make you immune to freeze for three seconds if you get frozen. To recharge them, just kill more monsters. You can gain more slots for charms by upgrading your belt. The mercenary wields a crossbow that can be loaded with different ammo types, offering versatility, power and mobility. All classes in Path of XL2 can be controlled with WASD, which makes this class play exactly like a shooter. For the crossbow, you will find skills that work like shotguns, sniper rifles, assault rifles and even grenade launchers. But not only that, there are a wide variety of more interesting elemental ammos too. It's very fast to switch between ammo types, as so long as you already have them loaded, which makes the mercenary able to combo abilities together for devastating effect. Use Glacial Bolt to create walls of ice to separate enemies, then switch to Fragmentation Rounds to explode the ice, dealing massive AoE damage. If I come across an armoured enemy, I could use Armour Piercing Rounds to break their armour, and then High Velocity Rounds to take them down. Or perhaps I could fire a gas grenade to poison enemies before detonating the cloud with an explosive shot for massive damage. If you want to call in some suppressing fire, you can summon artillery ballistas. These have a minimum range, so you'll want to prepare your position carefully before moving in. There are 22 active skills for crossbows. By endgame, you'll be calling destruction down from the sky as you litter the battlefield with grenades and pepper your enemies with your automatic shotgun. If you're looking to take a back seat and let your minions do the work, then the witch should be your choice. She can call forth hordes of undead monsters to fight for her while casting powerful chaos spells that debilitate her enemies. Occult skills are some of the most varied in the game, with skeletons, noxious spells, specialty minions, curses and sacrificial magic. Before we talk about minions, we'll have to talk about a new resource in Path of Exile 2 called Spirit. This is a spirit gem, which allows you to pick from a range of persistent skills. All classes have a variety of these skills which can add some very interesting effects, like Arctic Armor which does cold damage to enemies that hit you, or Raging Spirits which summon fiery skulls each time you cast a fire spell. For the Witch though, we'll want to be using our spirit to create permanent minions. These minions will be revived automatically when they die, so you don't have to worry about resummoning them all the time. Here I'm using the skill screen to allocate which minions I would like in my horde. You can see the spirit cost of each one. Skeletal warriors are cheap, but weak. Useful for tanking damage and distracting enemies. But I want more heavy hitters in my army, so I'm going to unsummon some warriors and instead add skeletal arsonists. Permanent minions come with special active abilities called command skills. You can order these guys to detonate your own minions for even more damage and area of effect. If you want a bigger army, you'll need a scepter. This new weapon type is imbued with even more spirit, allowing you to summon even more friends. And if you want an even bigger army than that, you can take advantage of corpses to summon true hordes of minions. But what can a witch do while her army is at work? Well, she has a range of chaos spells to spread disease amongst your enemies, or bone skills to impale them. Or, you know, you could curse them to make them weaker so your horde can take them down. There are 25 active occult skills. By the end game, you will be the leader of a fearsome army of the dead, consuming everything in its path. The sorceress bends the elements to her will, using them to unleash devastation on her foes. This classic spellcaster weaves a flurry of elemental magic from afar. The elemental skills have everything you might expect and more. Fireballs, icy explosions, lightning storms, you get the idea. Each spell is unique and has many different ways to build and combo with others, even between different elements. For example, Flame Wall conjures a burning line that not only damages enemies, but also empowers all projectiles that pass through it. If you place a wall and fire lightning sparks through it, they'll gain extra fire damage. 
It's a good idea to take advantage of the ability to automatically swap weapons when you use certain skills. Having a special staff with bonuses to fire skills and another with bonuses to lightning skills can really power up a combo like this. The sorceress can also take advantage of powerful trigger gems. For example, you could grab the Cast and Ignite gem and use it with Firestorm. As you ignite enemies, a counter will go up in the top left corner. When it's full, a Firestorm will automatically be cast at the enemy that was ignited. There are 25 active elemental skills. By endgame, you'll be firing off projectiles left and right as you rain down elemental storms on your foes. Now, those are the characters that will be available at the start of Early Access, but we will be adding six more character classes with just as many skills and options as these. There's a lot more to come. There's one more important thing to mention about skills. Even though we talk about them as belong to each class, in reality, there are no restrictions. You can use all these skills on any class so long as you have the attributes. For example, a Poison Ranger might want to try out using Occult Curses to increase her poison damage. Or a Monk might want to trigger Elemental Ice Walls to use with his Glacial Cascade combo. The possibilities for cross-class combos are practically unlimited. We're looking forward to what kind of things you guys might find. Now, Path of Exile is a game known for build customization, and we haven't even scratched the surface of what is possible yet. 